day three, and we have RPM on our nitrous controller. This is amazing. This is something we struggled with a lot. This is a major breakthrough. First good news in a while. We're really excited. This means we might actually be able to make some power. All right, we finally got MAP and RPM yeah. on the fuel injection controller. Oh my goodness, that was a miracle. The tank has been drained. We have added E85. The first tube has now been prepared. And we are about to do our first startup on the Eco Sting with E85. So once we do this, I'm gonna set up some histograms and try to figure out how far off our fueling is at all, if any. Got the stoic ratio changed for the E85. Hopefully it's uh, easy from here. So far, we, you know, you saw what we've gone through. It's been, it's been crazy. And we just keep chucking away and we're able to overcome everything so far, which is amazing. Uh, there were several times where we were thinking, you know what, this is not gonna work. We just need to figure out what we can do and what we can actually get done in time before the race. If we need to change our path and then we'll do it. But now, everything's working. So, hoping for the best. tune I did a lot of guessing for the E85 I was comparing on a, an F-150 3.7 that is flex fuel so I was looking at the differences of regular pump fuel versus alcohol in that tune I kind of used that to guesstimate what I should do for some of the startup tables here on a, on a rough guess it's actually not that bad you know, we're only we're only off by 15% now that it's somewhat warmed up. We're still 128 degrees. Right now I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna let it warm up so I can get a better idea of what I need to do for the fuel trunks. I need to get out of some of those cold starts and then into some of the normal tables. for a 3.5 Eagle boost. Typically these engines at idle, you'll feel them and get a little like that. It's all in like 740. I did raise the idle slightly. Plans for the 85, you see right here. But just look at those numbers and you tell how smooth it's idling. So fluctuating by 20 or so. 140, we're still around 10%. It's looking really good. Okay. Sounds quieter. <laughs> it's a little running a little smoother than it was with the 91 in here. Once we start boosting it, this will kind of tell me what extra fueling we need. We'll start without fuel, without auxiliary fuel. And we'll see what it needs and then I'll make adjustments. This is a this is a table that matches the, the fuel injectors here. So then once I look at that, we'll have an idea of what we need to modify these two. And so we'll like we'll build the tune without that and then let it tell us what it needs. What it wants to what it needs to deliver the target. Right? Pretty cool. Finally got that working. Only took three days. I know. End of day three. 
and we have the auxiliary fuel injector working. It wasn't uh, my original plan of using the multiplier didn't work since it's got a maximum of 1.9 on the multiplier, so I had to go back and rethink that. But the new idea seems to be working. So tomorrow we are going to be dialing in some E85 and some boost. This is where it gets really interesting. So we just started making some hits on E85 and pretty bad boost leak, you could hear it. We're only running like 10 pounds of boost now and it found a turbo charge pipe leaking. So Steven's trying to fix it right now. Hopefully we can get this back on and make some real hits. Currently fighting an issue where the throttle is closing and it's going into a protection mode when the fuel pressure drops low. What's odd is that air fuel is good. The additional fuel injectors are working. We are dead on the money meeting our target. But the PCM still thinks that fuel pressure is too low and it's closing the throttle to limit power. I went back and looked at some comparisons and I have F-150 logs from my truck when it was making you know, over 600 horsepower and the fuel pressure drops lower than what EcoStang is dropping to and the throttle stays wide open and we're making way more power without extra injectors. So, Going back, doing some comparison, trying to figure out what exactly is the difference between the two, uh, what's limiting the throttle at this point. It's a, it's a big mess, but we're working at it, and uh, we don't really have a choice at this point. We, we need the throttle to be open, so it is what it is. Uh, lots more work on the to-do list as usual. Not checking things off, only adding things to the list. Heading home for the night. It's like three o'clock in the morning now. We're actually leaving on a pretty good note. The the previous tests, the idea worked. So despite Stoic having no impact on the tune when we make the changes, was able to manually adjust all the speed density tables for the E85 and it's uh, surprisingly <laughs> right on target that it's actually really good so we are ending on a good note like I said uh, E85 was about the same results of some good 93 octane and a heavy dose of meth injection so the power we ended up now keep in mind this is stock turbos basically not too much of a modified exhaust but yeah you know this is basically a stock f-150 and we ended up with 420 horsepower and uh, I think 480 foot-pounds of torque sounds right but the problem is because this um, Mustang swapped EcoBoost doesn't have the select shift we don't have the ability to you know, first, second, third, and then lock it into the gear. I'm having to like roll into the throttle to get the watt pull, which what's happening is we're not getting that great torque spike and uh, torque bump and uh, boost that we would usually see at lower RPMs, you know, between two and 4,000 RPM. So I'm having to roll in it, which is causing the torque converter to not lock up until way later which is definitely impacting torque on the dyno so that 480 is actually pretty good uh, if we were able to just straight up smash it and hammer and these are in third gear by the way we'd probably see some even bigger numbers if it was in fourth gear but uh, this car has 331 gears so I'm really trying to you know, focus it on what we're gonna see at the track we should finish out the back door in third gear 
So there's really no reason to be making dyno pulls in fourth gear other than bigger power numbers. But, you know, for what we're doing, uh, you know, this is track purposes. So we're not really focused on how much power is it going to make on the dyno. We're, we're trying to make it perform the best at the track. So yeah, freaking long day today. Super, super long. At, at several points throughout the day, we didn't think we were going to go at all. In fact, earlier, uh, we, we haven't talked about this yet, but earlier in the day, while on the dyno, just after a pull, there was some loud crushing bang noise and the tires locked up and I thought for sure that the transmission had just broken. Something major just happened. Uh, I called Steven on the phone and I was like, you gotta, you gotta get back here. Something bad just happened. And I don't know. We have our assumptions of what it was, but we can't really prove either way at... Uh, we checked the car out. It's fine. Uh, it gauges into gear correctly, and it's not making any odd noises. It's driving fine. It's performing fine. So after that, we figured, crap, maybe the dyno's broken. Because when we first confirmed that the car is rolling properly and, and everything's good on that side, it was making this really weird noise, like almost like you had sand in a can as you're rotating it. And so we we unstrapped the car, rolled it back, rolled the wheels free spinning on the dyno, and it wasn't making the noise. It's like okay, so the car's not making noise anymore. The dyno is not making noise anymore. Let's go ahead and strap it back down. So we did. And it starts making the same noise. But this time, I had Steven drive and I got really close to it. <laughs> and he would not believe what the noise was this time. Remember? Now this is not the bang noise that I heard or, you know, this is loud. By the way, it scared the crap out of me. I thought for sure something broke, something major catastrophe. Uh, it didn't sound like engine though, it sounded like under me and the car jumped around and it was nasty. So back to the dyno. We strap it down again, I'm l up close listening. That's the tire sticking! Yeah. Alright, go, go neutral, you're fine. And it's the freaking tires are so sticky that it's sticking to the dyno roller as the wheel's spinning. Just that, that exact same sound when you're at a, a track that's prepped really good and your feet are sticking to the track doing that constantly making that noise because the tires are so sticky, they're sticking to the dyno roller. Had to be because whenever the whatever locked up or whatever happened previously, the tires got extremely heated. Either the dyno was still moving and the transmission locked up or the tires were still moving and the trans and the dyno locked up. It, it, we can't say, but we're kind of leaning towards something locked up in the transmission while the dyno was still free spinning because of the previous locked in third gear issue, which we resolved by the way. Because of that, it's making us think, uh, you know, more likely that something with the car went wrong uh, rather than the dyno. But regardless, it's performing now. We've made several watt hits. Uh, we're making good power. The boost is there. And uh, tomorrow is nitrous.